Well, when I first read the script, I remember thinking whoever is lucky enough to be able to play Ruby is a very, very, very lucky girl because it's not very often that, you know, you have so many skills that you, you can learn for a film. You know, I had to learn sign language. Um, I've never had a singing lesson before, but I love, I love, I love a challenge and I love a film that will educate me and make me grow as a person. So when I read the script, I, I completely fell in love with the writing and, and the characters. I fell in love with the Rossi family. I think since Children of a Lesser God and no offense to the other projects that I've been involved in, uh, where there were deaf characters in them, I found that since Children of a Lesser God, there wasn't really a, a profound exploration of characters being deaf whether they were authentically deaf, whether the story was about being deaf, or uh, it, you know, love in the deaf and hearing communities using deaf background actors, or if we're talking about even speaking lines as deaf characters, I think Coda is truly the. It, it's just the full package. It's it delves so. It's such a deep dive into the deaf community that I really was excited to be a part of it, about about part of this film. Uh, being involved from, you know, I mean, talking about issues of, of accessibility, authenticity, but this is a movie that is about, at the heart, a family, a family that lives in a small town, a family of hardworking people who love each other, who have a hearing daughter, she just happens to be hearing, who rely on her as an interpreter. And I wanted to be clear that for people who have never seen deaf people or have never even seen sign language, and they think that they we're all the same, that we live the same way, that we come from the same mindset. We are not, we are as varied as people who can hear. And this is one facet of the deaf community. And that's the best I can put it. 